come here. I have read your letter. I ordered you to record everything that you see and hear in the garden. You have done well. Father. Come here, Finn. Yes, father. You miserable little slave, how dare you call me father? You wanted to escape the garden? No, no, I didn't. Dear sweet Finn, don't look so shocked. Did you really think you could conceal anything from me? Don't you remember who brought you here, who gave you a new name and your new life? If not for me, you would have died like everyone else in that worthless village. How dare you betray me? No, your majesty, I didn't. Father, your majesty, dear sweet Finn, have you really forgotten that you are call me when you are alone? No matter. I will enjoy instructing you again later in a more comfortable setting. Why are you trembling, Finn? Don't worry. You still have your uses. Continue to perform your duties and I won't dispose of you. Irel Rice, on the other hand, I intend to have him executed after the miracle play. No, please. Haven't I always served you faithfully in the past, Father? Don't punish Irel for my mistakes. You think you've served faithfully? Your duty is to watch the princesses to serve me. And you did until Irel caught your eye. I'll do better, Father. I'll do whatever you ask for if you let Irel go. Think of it as a reward for my faithful service, please. Finn. <sighs> I finally <sighs> found <sighs> you, Finn. Irel Rice. I found Finn. She is on her knees begging before the Emperor. I don't know what she is asking for, but he isn't in a merciful mood. Before I can react, he grabs her by her slender neck and pitches her from the dais. Her brief scream comes to an abrupt end on impact. A wordless warning. To the Emperor, Finn might as well be a doll. He is free to play with or break her as he sees fit. I see you have Lin's sword with you, Arel. Why don't you tell me what you've come to say? Your Majesty, please don't let him get near you. Please forgive me for my behaviour. What I want to say is... Look out, Your Majesty! Aurel, have you forgotten who taught you the sword? You thought you'd be a match for me in your current condition? Forgive me, Aurel. He took me in when I had nowhere left to go. He is the only family I have left. I can't bear to see him hurt. Finn. You've disappointed me, Aurel. What are you doing here? You're already half dead. Did you expect to defeat me like this, or maybe you simply hope to redirect my ire from Finn? You're just as weak as your mother. Don't you have the strength to even put up a fight? Finn, pick up Lin's machete. Bring me Aurel's head and all will be forgiven. Frostflower. Your Majesty, please spare him, I beg you. Kill him. My blood feels like it's boiling. My skin is on fire. I should have known better to the face the Emperor in this condition. This, this must be my end. I hear voices, but the meaning of their words escape me. I can't collapse yet. I have something I need to do. The only reason I came here, focusing on the scene before me, I grope around until I find Flossflower. I have to help you, Finn. Stop, Arel. You'll be killed. A stronger hand than mine snatches Flossflower from my grasp. I was too late, after all. Finn, how dare you betray me? I open my eyes to face my death head on. Shock at the scene unfolding before me clears my head. 
The Emperor is pinned to the throne, frost flower protruding from his gut. The gentle maid is kneeling at his feet in tears. A river of red is flowing from the wound, forming a creek that trickles down the throne. Father, wake up! What do I do? I didn't mean to hurt him. He's the only family I have left. Why? Why is he abandoning me as well? Finn, you were defending me and yourself. I don't care. I just wanted to keep you from hurting each other. But I hurt my father, the one who saved me, took me in and raised me as his own. Aurel, what do I do? Please kill me. Finn, he was abusive. You didn't do anything wrong, Finn. I won't let you take the blame for killing your father. Killing the Emperor was the only way to save you. It's what I came here to do anyway. I will take the blame for his death so you can go free. Never mind me, just go. In my words, profound relief washes over her face. Frostflower falls from her grip. She gives me a sad smile. Thank you. You've always been there for me. I can't let you help me this time, though. I have to face the consequences of my actions. Once again, she kneels beside the blood-soaked body. Now she looks up upon him with sympathy. Father, no, your majesty, forgive me for not obeying your last order, and thank you. I can't hear what she whispers to him. It isn't meant for me to hear anyway. Just then another girl steps out from behind the throne. Marvellous. Princess dear, why aren't you in the garden? Does it matter why I'm here? But as long as I am, I can prevent you two from rushing to the executioner's block for each other. I never liked you, Finn, but I don't wish you dead. Take care of yourself. Both of you, leave. Now. But I'm a murderer. Huh. You sacrificed much to the garden. Taking care of your mess is the least I can do to repay you for freeing us. She whispers something to Finn before pushing her away from the dais. Don't you want to see your home again, Finn? Arel, the cage is broken. Take her away from here. Quickly! They trusted me so easily. They even left the murder weapon behind. Good! It's enough to keep me off the sus suspect list. The wall will fall when the mage who built it is mortally wounded. Thank you for that insight, Erebus. Now then, Your Majesty. Still hanging in there, aren't you? Good! I have a score to settle with you. And whoever investigates your murder won't notice a handful of extra cuts. I watch as a butterfly flies beyond the point where the barrier used to be. Um, Irel? Is it really all right? Irel? I take hold of her hand, cold with nerves, and without a word I stretch it out to the edge of the unseen barrier. Together we're reaching out, hands trembling. Our hands go past where the barrier once stood. Are we really free? This... this must be her true smile. Her face without its mask. It's shining with a kind of innocent happiness only a child can experience. Come on, let's leave together. We can go to my hometown. Erephus taught me its name. Oh, wrong voice. Good lord. Come on, we can leave together. We can go to my hometown. Erephus taught me its name. My real father must be waiting for me there, and my mother. Maybe brothers and sisters. The maid or rather the girl, for the disappearance of the wall took her shackles with it, sticks her tongue out at me to egg me on. Finn? I don't know what I can say. Finn, you need to look after yourself from now on. 
her smiles fade away. You aren't come you aren't coming with me, Aurel? I I can't, not now. You have a chance to live your own life and follow your dreams. I have my own life as well, and I can't run from it anymore. I need to face my destiny. I don't know what Lyra is planning to do to cover for us, but I can't leave her to face that storm all alone. And Lynn might need me as well. Should I stay? Don't worry about me. This is the only chance you'll get to leave the garden. Even a butterfly deserves freedom from this cage. Be happy, Finn. This is the only chance you'll get to make this choice. And it's my selfish choice to stay. I understand. I watch her to start to walk out of the oblivious garden alone. Aurel! She suddenly runs back and embraces me tightly. I'm going to go back to my hometown, but I promise to come back one day. I won't leave you alone here. That's my choice as well. I don't think either of us will be completely happy again until the day we are reunited. Letting me go, she takes a step back and bows to me like she did as a maid. Whatever you decide to do from here on out, Terrell, I will always be on your side. Don't forget, if you are tired, turn around and I'll always be smiling for you. Only for you, Aurel. Be careful. In the year 1316, Finn returned to the village of Tiladri, the land of retail. The true miracle play has begun. No one can escape the wheel of fate. 